Okay, let's talk about the visa run so you can get an extension and stay in Thailand longer. There are three ways that I'm gonna tell you guys the most fastest and cheapest way to do it, but it is painful. Yes, it's painful. It hurts physically. Stay tuned. Okay, so you're in Thailand, you're on a tourist visa, and you just wanna extend here for extra 30 days, or you wanna to try to stay here as long as you can and take advantage of what the options are. So apparently you can only do two land runs and three uh, air flights, flight runs, I don't know what you wanna call it. You fly to another country and you come back. But that could change and immigration can reject you anytime, okay? I'm just saying, letting you know, but it rarely happens. Most people are going to the Laos border for their visa run. Others are going to Cambodia. People in the southern part of Thailand usually go to Malaysia. Okay, so the most expensive way is going through a service. Usually these are people that will take you in a really comfortable van. Now in Chiang Mai, for example, it is around 1,900 baht. And what happens is that they take you to the border. You need this bridge, I forgot the name. You will have to pay for a bus to take you over the bridge. It's really cheap. It's like around 20 baht, below 50 baht. It's really not expensive. Once you cross the border onto Laos, you have to go to this place where you pay another 2,000 baht. They give you a stamp on your passport. There is no papers to fill out. I never filled anything out. Once that happens, you have to pay for the bus again and go back to Thailand and get stamped into Thailand, which doesn't cost anything. And then the service will take you back home. I forgot to add that they will pick you up at your hotel, hostel, or wherever you're staying. And they at. do make one stop for you to have lunch. So it costs 2,000 baht plus 1,900 and let's say around 50 baht for the bus service. That's a pretty big price. Now another cheap option but is slower in my opinion is to get a bus. So you can pay for a bus and the bus will drive all the way to the border for you. If you're in Bangkok, you may be lucky enough to catch a train and it's the same situation. You get to the border, cross the bridge, pay 2,000 baht, get a stamp, go back to Thailand and get a stamp in, okay? Now the cheapest option is what I did and that is to ride a scooter. Okay, so when I did this, I told the people where I'm renting a bicycle from, a motorcycle from, a scooter, whatever, I'm telling them, hey, I'm going to a border, what is the best bike? It is so important to let them know because not all bikes can travel such a long distance and they can break down and then you're in a deeper situation than you wanted to be. You might get late to cross the border, you're gonna have to pay a fine, all that drama. So you want the best scooter. And most of them are not even gonna recommend you to buy a shitty ass scooter that won't even last three hours on the trip or whatever it is. Keep going, baby. They don't want to deal with this issue of losing a scooter either, okay? So just tell them where you're going. They have no problem that you're going to a border. They're not going to make it an issue. They never made it an issue for me. So I paid around, I believe, 300 baht for my scooter. So I paid 300 baht and I also made a 2,000 baht deposit because I couldn't give my passport because I needed the passport to cross the border. So unfortunately, yes, there's a 2,000 baht deposit, but you get it back when you give your scooter back. You gotta drive four hours. Now here are some clips of my journey to the border on the scooter. And guys, I ran into some big trouble. I just ran out, ran out of internet. The sign says Chiang Rai here, but I don't know if I have to go here or here. So I'm gonna ask the locals. Uh, Chiang Rai. Here? Okay, come. Thank you. Nice lady helped me. Uh, Chiang Rai. Okay, come. I ran out of um, internet. So it's so important that I get Wi-Fi so I can purchase more data. Thank God I got an eSIM. But um, yeah, if it wasn't for the eSIM, I would be in trouble. So let's hope that this guy will give me Wi-Fi. So what did come out? I really need help. Is it okay I use your Wi-Fi, please? Yeah. Come cool car. Thank you so much. Guys, <laughs> those are lifesavers. Go to this cafe. If you ever come here, 
go to Horizon. They helped me. They could have told me, no, you had to buy something to use the data, but they did it. They're so nice. So now I got, I purchased um, some eSIM. Thank God for eSIM. And I am on my way, baby. I don't even know if I can park here. <laughs> now I just have to go and get my bus ticket. I don't even know if my scooter is safe where I left it. <laughs> I hope so. But basically, I got my bus ticket. So once you pass immigration, you gotta get a bus ticket and you gotta wait for the bus. And the bus is gonna take you to the bridge and I'll show you where you get stamped because you gotta get stamped and then come back. I do have a huge problem. My passport has water damage and I only got a couple pages left. I book an appointment for my uh, new passport in Chiang Mai. I'm just hoping Laos will accept it or Thailand will accept it because if they don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. Do I get stuck? Do they import me? The key is so you get off the bus, right? And then you come here. Go over here. Okay guys, good news. So they basically accepted my passport, gave me the stamp. Now I'm going back to Thailand, Chiang Mai happy about that but i'm gonna have to be driving at night at some point right now it's the afternoon I've got a four hour drive so it's eventually gonna get dark unfortunately and the issue with me is that i rode to laos too late so i slept in i think i left here around 11 or 12. my goal was to leave at 6 a.m to go to laos so i didn't have to deal with this issue of driving back to Chiang Mai in the dark, it dimmed. So you can see during the day, but at night it is so hard to see. So therefore you have to lift your um, your shield once in a while, your glass shield. And the problem with that is when you're driving through the jungle, you start getting all these bugs going into your eyes. And I end up having an issue going to the hospital to remove a wing that was lodged in my eye from a bug that flew in. Thank God it wasn't no scary mosquito that could have gave me malaria. That's my valuable lesson to you guys so you don't have to go through what I went through. But since you're not gonna go through that, you are going to go through this. It is painful riding four hours straight. Painful, my wrist started to hurt. My booty cheeks started to hurt because I did legs the previous day at the gym. My lower back was sore. So look, yes, it's the cheapest and it's the fastest, but if you don't want to deal with that pain, I do recommend stopping at a hotel, resting, you stay in Chiang Rai or whatever for a little longer if you wanted. And then if you go back the next day, then you don't have to deal with the pain that I dealt with which what you should be doing is leaving 6 a.m. in the morning, riding four hours there, doing the run, and then riding four hours back. Even though it was painful, guys, I loved every bit of it. It was so beautiful driving across the country, through the jungle, to Laos. It was such a beautiful experience, and I am going to do it again.